comes against me. For I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, and I will be sorry for my sin. But my enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they hate me wrongfully, and, mot and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are my adversaries, because I follow the thing that is good. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my God. Uh, for almost well, 30 days now, uh, in our prayer journal, we've been dealing with turning evil to good. If you are a follower, very closely praying daily, we're talking about creative miracles. And it is a creative miracle to turn evil to good. That's why Jesus had to die in order to turn sin into righteousness. That was not easy. It takes a miracle to do that. Of course, in the Pentecostal churches, we think the only miracle that happens is when a blind person sees. But it's not so. In this world, the major problem is turning evil to good. Turning things that are wrong into things that are excellent. And you will see this man, the psalmist, as he spoke here. And I liken this to the day and hour in our world and in our country. That a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters are hurting. They are hurting for money. They are hurting for sickness. They are hurting for trouble. Problems are just occurring right, left, and center. And sometimes they don't know what to do. And sometimes some people are confused. And they are wondering, is God still there? Is my father still there? But then, in the midst of it, people even begin to confess their sin. Because verse 17 says, For I'm ready to hurt, uh, to hurt, and my sorrow is continually before me. He said, I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. And verse 19 says, But my enemies are lively, and they are strong. And they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. So, you see the hard state of this man. Now, when you look at our nation today, and you see the wrong that is in the nation, well, you just don't know what to do. Because you are involved, and because the problems also engulf your life. And the enemies of the nation, and the enemies of righteousness, are so multiplied. The other day, I was listening to a commentary about somebody who was the head, he was in the senate and he was the head of a group that was asked to work on fuel subsidy and this was a former governor i don't want to mention his name but it's one of these former governors from the north and he said he was a member or maybe the chairman of the review of that group and he said this nation is rotten I mean, recently, just about four days ago, he was speaking on TV, and he said, this nation is rotten. He said, I was a member here, and this is what happened. And he said, one of my friends even came to the president at that time and told the president and said, listen, we are tired of making money out of fuel subsidy. Think about that. And so he said, all oh, this thing is a scam. He said, it's a scam. Now, how does it affect you? Because uh, a lot of people who might not be able to go to church, as a result of maybe they don't have money. Maybe they are not able to make it. 
maybe they don't have the strength to come maybe they don't have food to eat maybe they don't have the wherewithal even to take care of their children maybe all they have is just to send children to school in the morning and that's the end for the day and so there is a lot of evil around us against righteousness that's the point but then here we stand to turn that which is evil to good and i pray that everything that is turned against the church we reverse for your good in the mighty name of jesus i didn't hear your loud amen enough and so is the society we are living in not to talk about other areas not to talk about other areas if we keep on talking about them one by one we will not leave this place but i'm talking in a general sense for our nation and the involvement as well as the trouble that christians go through and that the problems were not of their own making but they just find themselves inside of trouble and they don't know how to get out but i pray for you tonight you will get out in the mighty name of jesus god by his miraculous hand will help you to escape the problems of the land in the mighty name of jesus christ i woke up this morning and um, i just found out that the fuel we bought last night was finished I was work, I got to the house yesterday. I saw that my generator, because of overuse, also is broken down. So when I woke up this morning, there was no light. And then not long after that, somebody called me. They said one wall fell down. And not long after that, somebody else called me and said something else happened. Now I was wondering if all this was are surrounding me how about maybe the ordinary person what are they going to do but as we offer prayers tonight god will bring people out of trouble in the mighty name of jesus no matter how evil are arrayed against them the lord will deliver them in the mighty name of jesus because of the things that were happening around me i decided to make a phone call to some of our pastors i called this person 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 um in, in fact i was on number five and then the person picked the call <laughs> and I, the way i had his voice i knew obviously he was on his bed struggling he was sick so eventually when he, he couldn't even identify my voice eventually when he identified my voice he said, oh okay sorry sir sorry sir he said i'm very strong <laughs> i said you are not strong you are sick <laughs> i said it's good confession but you are sick <laughs> praise god i said you are sick <laughs> and he said yes i'm sick and uh, you know my condition is bad and this one and that he began he just told the story and uh, what happened and you know he was trying to explain but i didn't need the explanation because when a person is sick you put more pressure on that person he gets sicker so what to do is to pray to get him out of bed <laughs> praise god i said praise god so what i did was to first of all activate his mind and then activate his, his body and then activate his spirit and then by the time i we finished praying he himself was the one praying on top of his voice in tongues and dumping out of bed i pray that god will turn your evil to good in the name of jesus it takes the supernatural hand of god to change us from the evil circumstances of life to a something that is virile and good. 
When a person is sick, that is evil. That needs to be turned to good. When a person is poor, that is evil. He needs money in his or her pocket. When a person is living in sin, the person needs a change from the resources of heaven and they needs to righteousness through the blood of Jesus. When a person has a condition that is retrograde, Something that is retrogressive, going backward, dancing backwards, either through the dream or whatever happened, the person needs a power to lift him up and throw him forward. I pray you will be the one going forward tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen. So God is here tonight to deliver. And that in July... God will lift you beyond all that is called retrogression in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Thank you for the time you spent with me standing up. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I have no other message tonight but powerful communication vehicles of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I remember yesterday, all of yesterday, the brother who is trying to make a documentary for us came to my house. He had been asking, he wanted uh, to do my interview. Uh, that he has done a lot, but he wants to particularly do my own. I said, I did, I, at the time he was asking me, I didn't want to welcome him because and my mind was not made up on some issues. So I didn't invite him. But yesterday I invited him. And he started the interview. But at the end he asked a critical question. He said, now full stature is 30 years. And now you have talked about the past. What is for the future? <laughs> and I told him, I said, if you came 10 days ago, and you ask this question, I would not have had a clear answer. But as I'm sitting down here, I had a dream on the 25th of June, 2023. And this is the dream. And this is what God showed me. And I am not flippant in consideration of what God says. But to follow it. With all my heart. And to do it. With all my strength. So I said now I can answer you. Very very clearly. Because even as I that yesterday. I had put pen to paper. And what I preached here. Last Sunday. I put it in better form. For everybody to read. Because when you are going in a direction and you don't know where you are going, then it's a problem. But then when you are going as a child of God, you need to know the power that will propel you to go to where you are going. And that's very important as well. And I want to thank God for the encouragement, uh, the singing, our brethren, our leaders, and all of us together. I want to glorify God for all God has done in our lives from end to end, north to south, south to, to east, east to west, and all over around the world. We want to thank God for all that God has done. And to glorify his name for answered prayers. Because God answers prayers. And in the last 30 years, there are so many things that God has done. That we can't even count them. Some of them we can't even remember. The man was telling me to remember dates. I said, I can't remember every date. I said, I wish my wife were alive. Because she would remember dates and name and face and put it to it together. I said, I can't remember the details and I can't remember every name and every date. But the one I remember, I will say it as the Lord has led me. So, what I'm saying basically is the powerful vehicles of communication by the Holy Spirit. Without it, the Bible will not have been written. Without these powerful vehicles, the Acts of the Apostles will not have been written. And all the epistles will not have been written. And that's what you see in Acts chapter 2. 
And let's read the Bible again and look at it more closely. In Acts chapter 2, reading in verse number 17, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, and I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And when you look into Joel chapter 2, verse 28, where that comes from then you'll see that the prophecy of joel has come to pass because that's exactly what peter the apostle said because in verse 14 the apostle peter said standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said with them ye men of judea and all that dwell in jerusalem be it known unto you and hearken to my words that these are not drunken as ye suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day but this is that this is that this is that this is that that was spoken by the prophet joel this is that which was spoken by the prophet joel and I'm happy to say tonight, it's not only Prophet Joel that speaks about the last days. Prophet Isaiah spoke about the last days. Prophet Moses speaks about the last days. Prophet Elijah and Elisha and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and Hosea and all of them from Genesis to the book of Malachi speaks about the last days. Now somehow, the one that we know that this apostle mentions happened to be very significant at this particular occasion. And the Holy Spirit brought it up and reminded them, this is what the prophet said would happen. And this is what is currently happening. And I said the last Sunday that when a prophecy is fulfilled, it lands and it becomes apostolic. Praise God. I said praise God and that is significant that is significant and tonight I just want to deal with some things that are significant for us as a church as a ministry as a mission organization as individuals as families for us to begin to take more seriously the word of the living God the word of the living God when the person that led prayers from 4.30 was praying and it was, I had him groaning. I had him praying with tears. And he asked, what are you here for? What exactly are you here for tonight? He said, if you have not been taking the word of God seriously, he said, it is time. Why are you here tonight? I, and I want that word to charge us. And then the person that gave us exhortation gave us five points five highlights that's not a waste of words i know that some people will not write it down because they don't think it's from god i know some people will soon forget it because they they look like weak words they look like wasted words but that's how many believers behave when it comes to the word of god and so here we are told very clearly in verse 17 i'm not going to go beyond that and it said your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams three things they will prophesy two it said they will have visions number three it said they will dream dreams and without this three, the Bible itself will not have been written. Many dreams in the Bible. In fact, the Jews have uh, a, a practice of referring to the five uh, twenty dreams, uh, majorly in the in some from in the in the Pentateuch. And there are some dreams there at a particular times of the year. They revisit them because they were significant in the history of the children of Israel. Because they didn't forget what God told them to do. Not only that, 
here we have visions where God in chapter 15 of the book of Genesis began to tell Moses. He said these are things that God revealed to, to Abraham through a vision. He said God visited Abraham through a vision. And we read in the book of Revelation at the end of the Bible that God gave John the beloved visions and revelations of the things that were not yet. And then we see Peter, the apostle, which will be one of the emphases I lay tonight of the significance of us in this generation to pay attention to the word of God. Brothers and sisters, we cannot do the work of God. We cannot do evangelism. We cannot do those things just struggling. Your words must be born from heaven. Your words must carry weight from heaven. Your words must prick people's hearts to repent. The conscience of people must be pricked to repent from their sins. The heart of the people must be smitten so that they can repent of their sins and be saved. Go call your husband. That was the only word that Jesus told the woman at the well. Go call your husband. And the conviction came. I have no husband. And Jesus said, well, yeah, you are right. You have told the truth. I have no husband. But the one you are even living with now is the fourth or sixth man you will live with. And the, man, the woman became so convicted, left her water pot and ran to the town. Come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man. Now, why doesn't that happen very, very often? It's because we neglect our equipment. We neglect the grace that God has given us. We neglect the grace that God has given us in the New Testament. Because he told us what to do. Even though we know that the prophecies of today and the visions of today and the revelations and dreams of today have many sources. But they are not somehow, we are not ignorant of the fact that these are still powerful tools in the hand of the almighty God. Though we do not equate them to scripture, that's true. But preaching the scripture that is dry, has no beginning, has no end, and has no implication and no power or punch to it, is a waste of time. If only we added the inspiration with which the scriptures were written. And that's what I'm talking about in this next phase of full stature. And it must be well explained to us. That's why I've written it down in black and white. So that he that read it, there are readers, may run, there are runners. So understand, my brothers and sisters, and everyone who is listening to me tonight, that this is a crux in the word of God. In verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days. And that day, as he was speaking, that last day started. Amen. I said, Amen. That last day started. That last day started. And I'm going to give some emphasis to make sure you catch what the Lord is saying to us. Because sometimes if somebody is not shaking and vibrating, we don't think he's speaking from God. But then I want to say to you that inspiration from God is very powerful. And when you take that seriously, you begin to see things around your life change. You begin to see your words to people make meaning. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what is happening today. That the Holy Spirit is being poured on the world. On the church. Of course, there are branches of the church we, uh, we don't have time to talk about. And it is not our business to talk about them. But let's talk about the church where something ought to happen on God's behalf. 
And I believe as I stand here tonight, this is a platform of light. This is a platform of where angels gather. This is a platform where elders sit down to teach. Elders that are sent from heaven. Last Sunday as I was standing here, there were elders that were sent from heaven. And they sat around this, around this podium. Now, of course, you may not see it. But that's what happens sometimes. When you see a man sent from God, don't take him for granted. Because his words will certainly come to pass. And so as I spoke to you last Sunday, and I opened these same scriptures, there were those elders that were sent from heaven, all of them standing around here, and one of them was giving instructions to the others. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about Acts chapter 2 verse 17. It shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And they said, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Have you noticed in Acts, I believe chapter 19, in this, I think some verses in chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, uh, 21, sorry, Acts chapter 21 verse 9, if you notice very well, you will see the Bible said that the evangelist had four daughters and those four daughters were so trained in the family that they prophesied. That's what I was saying during the conference last weekend. How many of our daughters are prophesying? Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. How many of our, of our daughters are prophesying? Praise God. Maybe as they get older, their eyes of understanding will be opened and they will begin to prophesy. But even those of us that still have young daughters and have young sons, it is not strange from what we learned in the in the week that has passed, if our children should say, God said, God said, I heard God say this. You won't say, well, small boy, small girl, shut your mouth. Oh, 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 you know, why are you so bold to say that? Now, we will kill the initiative within them. Because if truly they had had the word of God, they would not be able to share it. And whoever is supposed to make a move because of that will never make the move and that particular route is closed down. So what am I saying? I'm saying that our sons and daughters should prophesy. What am I saying? I'm saying our youths should prophesy. What am I saying? I'm saying our old men, even though the Bible said they were dream dreams, but what they eventually say from their dreams is the coming from God. So everybody ought to be operating in the spirit. 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 Not in the flesh. Today you are up. Tomorrow you are down. Today you are up. Tomorrow you are down. I mean, you should collect yourself together and say no. I will operate in the spirit of God. And I believe that will fit to you and be good for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen. And so I want all of us who are leaders here to take this word to our centers. To take this word to our homes. To take this word to our neighborhoods and places and prophesy to the people in the streets. Praise God. I said praise God. It said they were professor. And let me put some emphasis here. We have taught us in this podium and in this church before. And encourage us to stand up and give testimony. Why? Because the things that God does is a message to be repeated. Can somebody say amen to that? I said, can somebody say amen to that? I said, can somebody say amen to that? In other words, when you give a testimony that is from God, you are saying, God, do it again. Because it says that Jesus, he has, is the spirit, is the testimony of Jesus is also the spirit of prophecy. And so because of that, we have been taught to give testimonies. Satan cannot eat my testimony. Praise God. I said, praise God. I mean, that's why some people believe and they become afraid. 
but by testifying you are prophesying even if you don't know what to say come and talk about your salvation even if you don't know what to say come and talk about the day you were saved even if you don't know what to say, come and tell us that I was born again this way, this way. Maybe there may be somebody in the congregation who is a thief. Maybe there will be somebody in the congregation who is an adulterer. Maybe there's somebody in the congregation that is a doubter, that's a Thomas, and doesn't believe anything. Maybe there's somebody whose heart is dark and is in the congregation. And by the word of your testimony, that person changes. Can you say amen to that? So those words you are speaking, they are things that have been given to you to export to us. And when you come to us, you deliver it in this port. I'm coming back to that. And because that is how serious prophecy is. That is how serious visions are. That is how serious, you know, dreams and revelations are. You know, I know that in some climb, they say sola scriptura. That means scripture only. That's the Latin word uh, to say only scripture. Well, come on, who wrote the scripture? Is it not the Holy Spirit that wrote the scripture? Is the Holy Spirit also not able to interpret the same scripture? Is the Holy Spirit not able to take the same scripture and use it as a word of prophecy to anybody he likes? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. These are abandoned tools. Because familiar spirits are taking over the church. And because of these familiar spirits who, that operate in the church. I know you, you know me. I know you, you know me. You know you, I know you, I know me, I, you know me. That's a familiar spirit. And those familiar spirits cause suspicion. The familiar spirits. And when familiar spirits begin to operate, people begin to struggle. They begin to struggle because they are now confused. They can't discern of the Holy Ghost. That this is not the Holy Spirit. This is not the Spirit of God that is operating. This is not the Spirit that of God that is working in my heart. And so when you come to the Spirit of prophecy and you begin an utterance, which I'll soon get to. Then you begin to understand that, that you, are, you have a product from God. That you are to deliver to somebody. Can somebody say amen to that? I says, can somebody say amen to that? That is how serious it is. But we have not understood it that way. But God gives me the permission today to say it a little clearer. And so he said, our sons and daughters will prophesy. And so we must encourage people to speak from the mouth of God. I was so happy the other Sunday when we gathered all our churches. And then we began to sing and pray here. And the choir from Agodi particularly made me excited. They came out of the... <laughs> Mommy G, don't be angry with me tonight. <laughs> they came out from the lock and key of Mommy G. And they came out here and they were dancing. <laughs> Praise God. I said they have broken the yoke of these big chairs. <laughs> because nobody in this big chair, very few dance. <laughs> Maybe Pastor Olurumi dances. <laughs> Praise God. I said, Praise God. I, I, are you with me tonight? I mean, just being jovial. But the fact of the matter is that I was excited because they came out, they began to dance. They didn't mind if anybody was looking at them. They broke the yoke of familiar spirit. Praise God. I said, praise God. That's the spirit of prophecy. That's the spirit of prophecy in action. That's the spirit of God making somebody to jubilate, to rejoice, to be happy. To be excited because of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Yeah, that's
that's the way it is so when you come to church and there is an air of an ear an ear air of what is going to happen what are we going to hear today uh, what's going to happen here and everybody just shoo like that and already the world has beaten us the world has beaten us Tinubu's petrol price has beaten us and all manner of cordials are beating us in the world when you come to church you must be free in the name of Jesus receive your freedom 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 be loosed in the name of Jesus and the Lord will keep you free in him in the mighty name of Jesus and so that's is the way it is brothers and sisters and I had this dream and I traveled in an on, uh, on an aeroplane remember the story is in the journal I've written it in the journal much more accurately and as we prepared we had there was this call to go to preach to people and quite a number of us gathered together we were ready we were prepared and we were ready to go and then we got to the airport and then there was no plane going to that place and we waited in faith we waited in prayer we waited just with bated breath hoping that an aeroplane will show up and come and carry us you know that natural things don't happen like that you don't just pack your bag and go to the airport waiting for an aeroplane you know that that's not natural but that's what happened in this particular case. We went and we were waiting, expecting. And then suddenly, our captain ar arrived. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Our captain arrived, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I didn't see his face. It was the Holy Spirit. Because when in, in a revelation, when you don't see the face of a person, it means that that's the Holy Spirit that is in that place. Praise God. And so they took us into the aircraft and we flew. It was thick darkness. Thick darkness. And we were going. And we were penetrating. We were going. And then suddenly we began to come lower. And then we saw this light on the ground waving to us like a big, big such light saying this is the place. And then our captain landed safely. You will land safely. I said you will land safely. Full stature will land safely in the mighty name of Jesus. And then we went around to do the bidding, heal the sick, cast out demons, heal, I mean, medical mission, and all that with salvation, medics, all manner of things, pregnant women, people that were poor, make provision for them, and on and on like that. We did that, and as we finished that, I came out of that dream. I said, Okay, thank you. This is the next stage of full stature. We must not be tired. And that's what the exhorter has just said. I'm, not, I'm sure he has never heard what I said last Sunday. That's what he has just said. We should not be discouraged. That's what he has just said. We should rise. That's what he has just said. Whatever you are doing before, continue to do. He has just told us those things. Are those things ordinary? Of course not. They exported and brought to us. I mean, can you ima imagine a man coming from Lagos, all the way from Lagos, to attend our fellowship at the praying to the womb of the month on his own? Spent his money, took train, came to Ibadan, and he came to just fellowship with us and encourage us. I mean, he can't come empty handed. I remember dropping him here, maybe around 11 o'clock. And he had been here in the hall praying since that time. And he came and he told you five things. Now, I'm so sorry, brothers and sisters. This is the point. When you are a flippant hearer, before next Sunday, you will have forgotten all he said. Why? Because you don't believe it was it's from God. You believe it's just a man that stood up and said something. No, brothers and sisters. That is the reason why what God showed me, I'm going to say it again and again and again and again. That's how we started. That's how we started. 
if you read the book of kingdom extension and behind that book i remember one brother Odo was my artist many years ago uh in, in the other church he helped me to draw exactly what i saw in the dream i saw myself under a purple tree and then I, it was one was ripe and i plucked one that was ripe and i was about to eat and the holy spirit said no don't eat open it up take the seed and he showed me the field go and sow the seed if you see that book do you see the illustration behind that book which i call you know uh, you know doing the para the apostolic paradigm we call the book now so understand what i'm talking about that god is speaking to you and i when many times we are not uh, we are busy really we are busy and we are trying to serve god in one way or the other trying to serve our families trying to serve one person or the other getting busy here and there no problem with that when god sees that you have not been able to really listen then he brings a dream then he brings a vision then they bring somebody to prophesy to you then they get somebody to send you maybe a whatsapp or maybe something in the facebook or somebody may send you something from a distant country and he speaks to your heart why because he wants to prophesy to your life i'm praying for tonight we will not miss such opportunities i said you will not miss such opportunities now here let me go with me to micah Go to, with me to Micah. Micah chapter number 5. Micah chapter number 5. This is interesting. I'll soon finish, I hope. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5 verse number 2. Give me Micah chapter 5 verse number 2. And if your hand is not far away in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 16 and 17. Uh, it will be close by. So be hanging on to that. But for this, it says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be the little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Can somebody say amen to that? Can somebody say amen to that? That's a big verse in the Bible. That's one of the biggest verses in the Bible. Now here it talks about Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And it said Bethlehem Ephrathah. That's the full meaning of Bethlehem. It said thou, though you be small among the thousands of Judah yet out of you shall come forth unto me that is to be the ruler in Israel. Then notice the following uh, part, the last part. Whose goings forth? Whose goings forth? Whose goings forth? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That's the secret of prophecy. Praise God. I said praise God. Now, I want to illustrate to you what i'm talking about here is a cup let's say this is a beautiful cup and it's sold in england and somebody wants to export it to you and say this is a beautiful cup i don't have somebody coming to nigeria but i want to export it by the post office or by courier and send it to you in nigeria and then they export this thing at dhl somewhere in england now that is an export can everybody say export that export will have a landing can everybody say landing praise god it will be it will have a landing at that landing is your house can you say amen to that so one place it's exported right in another place it is imported. In other words, you send and then you receive. But remember, this is a product. Hello? This is what? That's how spiritual things are. Spiritual things are products of heaven that are exported to your life. And they are carried on the waves of words. The mouth 
is the port. The mouth is the exporter. The prophet is the exporter. He exports words from his mouth and he lands in your house. Hallelujah. The last time I traveled, <laughs> I was sitting somewhere and somebody came and met me and said, well, I've been uh, appointed on this, on this trip uh, to serve you. And then at a point, he brought a packet. And he said, this is a packet. Uh, he said, if you like, uh, can I give you? And he showed me what was inside. Immediately I said, no, I don't want. After some five minutes, I said, what kind of foolish man are you? They gave you a gift and you rejected it. So I, call, I called the man back. I said, come, that thing that you brought before, where is it? He said, here it is. Ah. So I collected my thing. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. Incidentally, I didn't have pajamas. And it was pajamas up and down. And so free of charge. I didn't buy it. It's very expensive. Are you with me? Hello. What I'm saying is that God may send you a product and you reject it. Because you don't like the person that brought the message. That's how prophecy is. They are heavenly products. Alright? That are sent from God. And it passes through the wave of the Holy Spirit in the life of the prophet and the man of God and the speaker of the word of God and is exported to your house and it lands in your house. What am I talking about? The mouth opens and closes. Listen to me. Can you see my mouth? Praise the Lord. What have I said? Praise the Lord. Then my mouth closes. When I say praise the Lord, I'm exporting to you praise. And then I close my mouth. The port is closed. The port my mouth exports. And then closes. That's how serious prophecy is. Praise God. I say praise God. And so we who are preachers don't even know. We just come, I mean, not here only, but generally. I mean, I've been around the world. A lot of people just open the Bible and just throw words around and then close it and sit down. But don't know the consequence of what they have said. Can't carry the weight of what they have said. Praise God. I said, praise God. I mean, if I see a woman who has been barren for five years, and I say, woman, by the, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, this time, next year, you will have a child. That's an export. If I don't bear responsibility for what I have said, then I am useless. Then I'm not a serious person. Sorry, are you together with me tonight? That's exactly what I'm talking about. When Jesus said to the woman, where is your husband? That's an export. <laughs> That's an export to clean her marriage. To clean her life. What's your, where is your husband? It's a question. But that question carries weight. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That's how the word of God is. A lot of people have received the word of prophecy. But they have ignored it. And for the next five years, they are struggling. For the next 10 years, they are struggling and have forgotten the word that the Lord sent them. Yet, prophecy is a strong vehicle that communicates. Can you say amen to that? And then finally, the fact of the matter is that the same thing with visions. In visions, you are not closing your eyes or you are closing your eyes, but you are not sleeping. And then you are taken to another place and you see things. That's how it should, that should happen to believers regularly. As you kneel and you do your quiet time consistently, consistently, consistently for many years. Sometimes you kneel down there and you are carried away. Totally carried away and you are in another place entirely. To go and minister somewhere else where somebody is sick. And then suddenly you find yourself back where you are kneeling down. And you say, ah, what happened? I saw myself praying for such and such a place. Is because God has sent you there to minister. Can you say amen with me? These problems will be solved if we only use the tools that God has given us. Problems will be over. God can tell you tonight where to find the business for tomorrow. 
The business that will feed your family for the next one year. You can have it in a dream tonight. You can have it in a vision tonight. Somebody can bring you a revelation as I'm speaking right now. And receive the word now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen about that. I said I didn't hear your amen about that. So God wants you to be prepared all the time to hear him. Yesterday, like I told you, they came to do interview in my house. And at a point, they needed uh, a cable. And I had the cable in my bedroom. So I called Francis, go to my bedroom and go and bring uh, that uh, cable. It's attached to such and place. Just disconnect it and bring it. The man who was doing the interview was surprised. How could I send Francis to my bedroom? I mean, there was nothing in the bedroom that Francis cannot see. <laughs> Praise God. And if Francis was watching very well, he would have seen my bed full of books and papers. Why? Because I keep a biro and a jota on my bed. If I have a dream and suddenly I wake up in the night, I get up, I write it down. Because it may not be for me. Maybe for somebody in Australia. Maybe for somebody in, the, in New Zealand. Maybe for somebody in, uh, in America or Europe or somewhere in, in Maiduguri or somewhere in the Southeast Asia or somewhere in uh, Enugu or somewhere in Port Harcourt or somewhere in Lagos. I don't know where, but I write it down. There are many things I've done like that. And today I come to the office and somebody is waiting for me. And exactly what I saw. It's what I should tell that person and say nothing more. I didn't know he was coming. I didn't know his problem. But his word and his trouble was already solved before he arrived. I'm praying that your life will speak to your family. Your life will speak to those around you. Your life will speak to sinners. You will turn evil to good in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give you that miraculous power. That when you put your onion or whatever it is in the word of the Lord and you put it into a bitter bitter water that thing will be converted to normal water oh you don't understand my parable you don't understand my parable in other words where there is bitterness and you go there and speak that thing will change and the family will be reunited and a family will be quickened and a family will be together and I'm praying tonight it will be for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I cannot go on and on forever I have to stop somewhere but this is just a little of what I have to tell you we have been called and we are called to go to the nations and I don't repent of that and God brought it back fresh he brought it back fresh and I thank God this afternoon. I was so joyous. I was so happy. As I went to pick, pick by, by my, my brother from the railway station. He was talking about Germany. He was talking about uh, America. He was talking about Europe. And he was talking. I was just excited. Again, when the brother who was uh, doing the video or the interview yesterday. After he finished, he said, sir, can I sit down with you? I said, fine. And he sat down with me. And we talked for another one hour. And what were we discussing? The burden of the two of us. I mean, if very rarely do you find such brothers who, unburdens you, who you can unburden your heart to regarding evangelism, regarding the work, regarding some things that are hidden in the secret of your heart and you find somebody to tell. I'm not talking about, I'm so sorry. You know, but I had this burden inside me and he also had a burden that he wanted to share. We've been trying to get him involved in doing some of our work and then, you know, he didn't want to come out clearly about how he wants to do it. So I told him to be free because God will use every one of us as he has designed us. He will use every one of us as he has patterned and planned in life. And you will not be left behind. And you will not be left behind. But please understand this. Your problems are very simple. Sincerely, your problems are very simple. But the problem is that you have neglected God. You have neglected God. Many people have neglected God. Like I said, familiar spirits are entered. And when familiar spirits enter, they are robbers. They are thieves. They take away from you. You don't remember anything. And you don't do anything that is sufficient. You, of course, you would tell your story that, okay, you did something today. But is it really what God wanted you to do? And the answer may be no. And so we 
each one of us and anybody who is hearing this should take these powerful vehicles of communication from heaven very seriously that when God speaks to you and you know this is the word of the Lord you charge it and take it seriously let me close by going to first Peter I have to close there first Peter I can't read all that is here but please go follow me to first Peter that will be my last charge tonight first Peter can we go to first Peter I want to go to first Peter and they read some portions there uh, which are very, very important. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10, 11, and 12. First Peter chapter 1, verse 11, and oh, sorry, verse 10, 11, and 12. Three verses, and then we'll close. Where are you? Where are you? First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that shall come to you. Hallelujah. Searching what? Or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should be that should follow verse 12 unto whom it was revealed that unto them not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by, by them that have preached the gospel to you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven with things the angels, the angels desire to look into. Can you say amen about that? That explains the whole paradigm of what I'm saying about the New Testament. But it was the hunger. What do I mean by hunger? They searched. Searching in English, in the spirit, means hunger. Praise God. I never forget. I tell my children, I tell those who come to my house. I said, brought my children, I said, listen, when I used to lead Bible study, if I'm going to lead Bible study, an outline I did not write, especially the book of Ephesians. I didn't write them. Pastor Kumuyi wrote those outlines. And I got them from Bauchi where I was doing youth service. I kept them in a file, serially, until I got to Elori. And then I began to teach those verses. And then when I came to Ibadan, I started again teaching the book of Ephesians. But how do I do it? I take one outline and kneel down by my bed. And I go through every scripture he refers to. I go through every scripture, every scripture, every scripture. To the point that one of those days in children's home school there will be leading Bible study. I'll be doing a cappella and demons will be manifesting upstairs among the children. Because we were preaching the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. There is nobody that comes to this church and they listen to us for the first time who do not know we are preaching by the Holy Ghost. They testify to it. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise the Lord. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the hunger. I'm talking about the hunger. The searching. The searching of whether a word is true. How did I find out Micah chapter 5 verse 2? I found it by searching. I found how the word of God travels. And that they were not ordinary. They were products from heaven. Just like the products like a radio or a wristwatch or an Apple watch or a computer or a, man, a machine or a, or a car or a, a Land Rover or a trailer. These are products. Those products come on the wind of the world. Can you say amen with me? And they're exported from the mouth of the prophet. They're exported from the mouth of the child of God. There's no miracle that happens in the Bible that you won't see is accompanied by words. If you lay hands on the sick, you are accompanied by words. If you pray for the sick, you are accompanied by words. If you preach, you are accompanied by words. If you teach, you are accompanied by words. Why? Because the world is created by the world. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. But these men, they did not just sit down 
and close the Bible. I have no more time to read the Bible. No. The Bible said they searched. Verse number 10. The Bible said they searched. Verse number 10, please. Verse number 10, quickly. The salvation which we now have were prophesied. With the prophets inquired. They inquired. Go and look up that word in Greek. And see what it means. They inquired. Go and look for the word they searched. Those are the words that indicate the hunger in the heart of the believer. To know what's the mind of God. And when it has known the mind of God, it's bold to say it. Can somebody say amen? Oh, I can't hear your amen. I mean, how can you come to church and you have no testimony? Oh, I was so happy in my quiet time today. God said this and even if that is the only thing you have. That may be the only word that somebody may receive that day. Because it is the word of God. You search for it. You look for it. And then you found it. And then you spoke it. You were diligent. And then you spoke it out. Even though you don't call yourself a prophet. But you spoke it out. And the moment you spoke it out. It landed on the platform. On, onto which it was sent. Can you say amen with me? That's the boldness we must discover. That's the boldness we must receive. We must no longer be in the natural and just behaving as if, oh, somebody is, you know, we're begging for the word of God. We're begging the word of God. No, you can't beg the word of God. Be bold. Tell us what you had. Hallelujah. Tell us what you had. And when you tell us what you had, we're all glad. And so, you see, they sat diligently. Then they prophesied of the grace which will come to you. Verse number 11. Verse number 11. I'm taking two more minutes. Searching what? I told you what that means. It's exact time. Searching what? That's exact time. Exact time. They say we saw his star in the east. How did they see his star in the east? They knew and they were following from the east. And they traced that star until they showed where Jesus was born. So, so I would have no Bible. Forget those, those uh, Lobsarampa people. Forget They have corrupted the word of God. But they are not the people that created the sun and the moon and the stars. Are they? Are wicked juju people? Are they the people that created those things? Can God not speak to people he wants to speak to using the stone and the star? That's why he spoke to those wise men. And they followed the star. And I tell you, the eternal part of us has a star. May you not cover your star. May you not cover your star. May laziness not allow you to cover your star. It's a big prayer. I'm not insulting anybody. But I just know myself that I can be lazy at times. I just know myself that I can be... I can be I can be heady. I can be stubborn. I just say, God, I just want to sleep. And then I sleep. And then when I wake up, 10 problems come that I cannot solve. And you see now, you see yourself. You should have prayed last night. Are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? So, it's not what time? What time? What manner of time? What manner of time means a season. The spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when they testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. I'm not going to go beyond that. But I have taught you, if you look at the journals that have been written since 2010, I've told you how men manipulated time. And it is our prerogative as people of God to know when things will happen, at least in your family, at least to your children. At least in your own local church. At least in your own department. To know what ought to happen. What you ought to do. What can we do about this particular situation? It's our privilege by visions. It's our privilege by dreams. It's our privilege by prophecy. They're exported to us. And God is always speaking. Tonight, I believe you have heard him. Tonight, I believe your ears are open. Tonight you have heard that these are sent to you tonight. And you should no longer be afraid. No longer bottled up. No longer robbed by, by, by robbers. Which I call familiar spirits. No longer hemmed in by thieves, 
familiar spirit, they steal. They steal your, your authority. They steal from you. And tonight, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. The word has set you free. And you are free indeed in the name of Jesus. So all of us must rise up now. And we must pray earnestly and say to God, whatever has held me back, whatsoever has covered my eyes, tonight they are broken in the name of Jesus. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want to be serious now. I don't know what quickened me. I don't usually do it. Because I believe that all our overseers are okay. But the Lord challenged me today when I saw all these palavas around my life. I said, ah, let me even call these pastors. They are my children. Let me call them one by one. I know what's happening. Until I got to this particular pastor that was sick and bedridden. By the time I finished speaking to him, and he also finished praying in tongues, he was bubbling. And he wrote about five times, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm okay now. Thank you, sir. I was excited. Praise God. But that was the word of God exported to him. Can you say that with me? Can you say that with me? I said, can you say that with me? That was the word of God exported to him. A word of healing. A word of encouragement. A word to get out of bed. A word to say you are, you are, not, you are not weak. You are strong. A word to say I have healed you. A word to say that you, two people cannot go through the same punishment on the cross of Calvary. And tonight, you are healed. And tonight, you are delivered. And tonight, you are set free. And tonight, whatever from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you are set free in the name of Jesus. Can you raise your voice and say, Father? Can you raise it louder and say, Father? In the name of Jesus. Wherever my gifts are hanging. Wherever my benefits are hanging. They are now delivered into my hands. And I receive them right now. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? I want you to roar. Let the Lord hear your voice. I receive my gifts. I receive my gifts. I receive my gifts. I receive my gifts. I receive the grace of God. I receive the glory of God. I receive the glory of God. I receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I receive those vital, powerful communication vehicles of the Holy Spirit. I want you to begin to shout with all your voice. I receive it. 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 By the power of the living God. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive this powerful communication tools. This powerful communication vehicles of the Holy Spirit. I receive them tonight. Oh, you're giving me a mouth. Oh, you're giving me eyes. Oh, you're giving me utterance. Oh, you're giving me utterance, Father. I receive that utterance in the name of Jesus. I receive your utterance from heaven. In the name that is above every name, I want you to pray out loud and tell God you receive, you receive, and begin to prophesy from now. I expect your dream dreams from this night. I ran the social packet and a higher. God will find a solution to the problems that have bedeviled you for 20 years. I'm broke every night attack a passer. I'm broke every night that a passer about the hallelujah. Roba deke mandele babude hallelujah 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 in Jesus mighty name we pray